Uh, Gonky, speaking of airliners. Oh, dude. This is breaking news, actually. This is like new news. Um, we were talking about whether Southwest was in that. So this is Vast Aviation. We give them all the credit for making this. Um, I'll try to remember to stop it as we go. I hope it doesn't play in PowerPoint mode. But basically, the gist is a 737 operated by Southwest Airlines uh, was coming in. And there was a little bit, they say, like, I don't know what the wind report was. There was a little bit of a wind shear. So they had a tailwind at altitude, but then a headwind on final. And so uh, it kind of dumped them high. So they were like high on an unstable approach. So they, they basically are, they go try the first approach, they go around and then come back around for a second approach. And it's about 600 feet overcast with a uh, RVR. So visibility is being called out because it's raining. And when they do the second approach, they go around and on the go around, or maybe they don't, we'll have to watch. I, now I don't remember which, which, what the order of operation is. But basically, at some point in the sequence, Tower starts yelling at them to go oh, around, go around, go around, around, go around, around because you're about to because they were off laterally separate, they were laterally deviated from the final approach course. And uh, as has been pointed out in people that have commented on this, the approach plate for the ILS to LaGuardia says no autopilot, hand fly only, just based on how the approach is. Now, on a 737 in G, the captain has a HUD both sides i mean you're just flying off a flight director so it's not like a big deal to hand fly it you know it's you wouldn't be flying 737 I, I think southwest is the same at least at when i flew the 737 at our airline we weren't allowed to do cat three approaches to landing letting the autopilot do it because we didn't have it dual certified the captain would fly it to 50 feet on the rat out um via the hud are up you know 50 feet if you didn't see it you know go around but so i don't know what who's flying or, or anything like that i thought we'd watch it you're more current in 121 ops we could talk to it so here's south 40 tower southwest 147 ils4 southwest 147 4 clear land southwest 147 so you can tell the male voice, you'll you hear a female voice later. The male voice is the one flying, or sorry, the pilot monitoring. He's not flying. Right. So, uh, because that's just how it works. Usually yep. the pilot monitoring is the ones talking on the radio. Pilot flying is just focused on flying the airplane. So we don't know who was the captain or not. My assumption would be that the captain would be flying this, but 600 feet is not really, you know, I mean, that's You're not, right. in an airliner, that's not a big deal. Yep. Tower JetBlue 2813 inbound for ILS 4. JetBlue 2813, McGrady Tower 24, clear to land, traffic support zone position 1 3. Currently showing uh, same speed as traffic, uh, 12 o'clock, 3 and a half miles per hour. Tower 4, clear to land, JetBlue 2813, Roger. Okay, here's the weather. Um, 0 4 0 at 16 knots, so runway 4, so right down the runway, 1 statute mile, heavy rain, mist, overcast at 600, 29 or 7 niner. Um, so it's, it's not great weather and no. the rain is not, it's not a good thing. And this is a condition where you'd be cognizant of like a microburst, yep. you know, if it's heavy thunderstorm activity, uh, wind shear, all that stuff. So it's, it's all a bunch of stuff that's playing, but reduce visibility, re visibility that will suddenly and unexpectedly reduce because of where you are in that rain shower, uh, does not seem fun. And LaGuardia short runway. So, you know, LaGuardia is one of those ones where you back it down. Yeah. You know, you're, you're not, uh, you don't get the luxury of a, a nice smooth. Yeah, Southwest 147, we got to go around. Okay. Southwest 147, maintain 2,000, fly runway heading. Runway heading 2,000, Southwest 147. So this is their first go around. Southwest 147, when you get a chance, just let me know the reason. They want to know why. We're too fast, too high with the tailwind, Southwest 147. Got it, thank you. Which is what happens, right? Tailwind pushes you farther along the course. Uh, you're not getting slowed down. You still got to descend, so it's pushing you close closer to that um, that point where you have to be configured 
I believe it's a thousand feet when you're in the weather, 500 feet on a VMC day. So you have to be stable. You guys do that stable target sync. Yeah. It's 1500 for us. Oh, is it? Yeah. I think it was a thousand and five hundred, but every airline could be different. Stop this 147, climb maintain 3000. So they're just going to get back, back around. And you'll see here in a second, JetBlue is going to do the same thing. Stop this 147, maintain 3000, flyline heading and contact push 134.9. 3000, runway heading 30, was that 349, 147? Yep, 134.9. See ya. I will say, too, from an airliner perspective, a go around is not common. It is a oh. there's a so it's it's not like you're in your fighter and you just, you know, light the blower, pick up the gear and all that stuff. There is a lot going on when you do when you actually do a go around and especially the busy airspace like LaGuardia, they're busy. So it's yeah. starting to add to their workload as they go. You know, and I, I preface that because, you know, what what's going to happen here later you can start to see the error chain kind of start to build. Which we don't know why this happened. I'm not going to, you know, throw right. anybody under the bus. But they are vector vectored back around. I guess JetBlue didn't go around on this 40, one. 40, Tower Southwest 147, ILS 4. Southwest 147, the great Tower, only 4, clear to land. Only uh, 4, touch down, RVR, 6,000, roll out, 5,500. Clear to land, 4, Southwest 1. And that's not bad RVR. I mean, that's, that's not terrible. Um... But it's still raining, so you're probably thinking, oh, LaGuardia, I think it was a Flaps 40 landing. I think that's one of the places. And, dude, the 737 with Flaps 40, because that's all the flaps, it's a, it's not fun. to. Fl I didn't like flying a little Flaps 40. Oh, well, last two words, Jeff Lewis 698, check out some alien LaGuardia, 729 or Hmm. So there's stuff going on here, right? They're not the only ones dealing with stuff. The, the JetBlue flight in front of them is now... You know, getting the low altitude alert, which means they're below where they're supposed to be on yep. the approach, and they're at a thousand feet. So they they probably needed to be uh, higher than that based on where they are on the approach. Tower JetBlue six ninety eight going around. JetBlue six ninety eight climbing two thousand fly runway heading. Two thousand runway heading JetBlue six ninety eight. So everybody's getting. JetBlue six ninety eight climbing three thousand. Maintain three thousand JetBlue six ninety eight. And they're going to say, say reason. And JetBlue 698, when you get a chance, just give the reason for the mess. Yeah, it looks like we've got some wind here, JetBlue 698. Roger, thank you. Uh, contact first, 134.9. So this makes sense, right? They talked about the tailwind. They were getting slam dunked. It was hard to do. A tailwind that switches to a headwind. Sometimes you get wind shear conditions. Mm -hmm. If the... Uh, Weather radar detects, is that how it is in the air? I'm, I'm, I'm assuming this is an A3, it's yep. an A320. So it'll yeah. give you a wind shear, wind shear, and you just have to firewall it and go. And you just go around, yeah. Yeah. Um, so at this point, you know, you're Southwest, you know that the, the people, the, the plane in front of you just got actual, you know, wind shear conditions. Um, so you're almost ready to do to go around if you're not already planning to divert somewhere else because wind shear is not something we like to mess with because there's been a lot of fatalities in you know aviation because of wind shear. Yeah, so, and it's yeah, and so like I see in the comments, some people are asking about runway change. It's like a lot of times it's very common that the wind on the ground is not the same wind you're experiencing out on the approach here. So they'll be having a tailwind on the approach, and as they get lower to the ground, the wind shifts, hence the shear. Yeah. And you know, the, the headwind will go to a tailwind or a tailwind will go to a headwind, vice versa. It depends on where you're at. But prevailing okay. winds was favoring uh, runway four. Yeah. So there was no reason to change runways. Right. At this point, you're thinking changing airports. Yeah. You know, you're thinking <laughs> exactly. diversion because right. LaGuardia just ain't happening. Now, I don't know what the forecast was as to whether they were thinking then conditions were improved. But mm -hmm. if, if there's heavy thunderstorm activity such that, you know, the, the guy in front of me is just called out for wind shear. I mean, you it's 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 different from a wind shear alert. This is right. no kidding. Somebody experienced it and went around. Four nine. Southwest 147, let me know where you break out at. Will do. American twelve sixty three look like that. One three line up weight, chapter four. American twelve sixty three runway one three line up weight. All right, so Here's the issue. You can see where he's supposed to be. The runway, you know, you can extend that out. 
and they're starting to deviate to the right, of course, which is where the, the terminal's right here. They're going to show a picture here in a second. Go around, go around. So I'm going to head in, climb in, say 2,000. Climb in, say 2,000, 2,000. So at the end of the runway right here, they were at 200 feet, according to what their transponder says, you know, whether that's reporting correctly. Not in any position to land. And tower calls the go around. That's that's pretty crazy on a on a weather day like this. On a weather day like this, now yeah. at six hundred feet, they should be out of the weather. They should be now visibility wise. I don't know. They're hand flying this approach, but they should have already been on the go around if they didn't see the runway. Unless they're like, uh, it's hard like, to tell. I mean, but but I mean, we don't want to speculate. But uh, yeah, I, I, I this is it's it's tough to. I mean, I can understand deviating to the right, of course. You know, I, I, you know, as you get task saturated or whatever, that's why you have two pilots backing each other up. But this is a, this is going to be a, a human factors thing, you know? Yeah. And I mean, I mean, yeah, I, it's not the first time, you know, an airliner is lined up on a taxiway or maybe a road or something. I mean, you break yeah, out of the, it. if you've ever flown in hard IMC, right? We were like, when you break out of the weather, it's like, boom, there's a site picture. You're like, okay, now where am I, <laughs> right? Um, I, we're all used to like being, okay, there's the rabbit lights. There's the, there's the approach lights, runway environment site. But I, I don't know. Like I guess I don't um, want to speculate. I, I don't but, know, dude. If you look at the, the yeah, dots here, they I were know. right of course. Like, when did when they break get, out, though? I, we don't know. But See, when you get to the, the point of, I mean, you have to be stable. You, ha you have to be stable and what is it within a half a dot? Yeah. So like this, this would have been a go around prior to that. Oh so yeah. That's, that's the concerning thing is that it, that's why we do the, the, now if the navigation equipment's not working, right. Why were they you're still, but you're still cross tuned, right? So you're both yeah. sides are seeing their stuff yeah. and that's why they're backing each other up. That's a, it's just a tough one to, I'm sure this will lead to a, some level of an investigation. We'll find out. Um, I think it's 47. Dude, that is right over the terminal. Continue climbing. Yeah. 7447. And uh, when able to take reason, where you were like uh, not on the approach. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So th this is telling the visibility has gone down. So maybe they were outside, you know, it, uh, you get to the, I, I can see this, right? You, you, you get below the weather. Visibility is good where you are. You get into this rain band. You duck under. You, yeah. You lose that. You lose yeah. visual and you're drifting because you're just not realizing, you know, yeah, well, he taught like so. Brickyard goes around, and then then he's like, "Oh, I just went back to 6,000. I mean, so it's it's yeah. The weather. I mean, clearly, the weather is is a major contributing factor here. Yeah, eight point seven. We're unable that uh, we're four thousand is the best we can do. Seven eighty four cancel approach clearance, maintain three thousand. Fly runway heading. I cancel the approach clearance for uh, three thousand runway heading. Brickyard fifty seven eighty four. Process one forty seven. You with me? Yep, just trying to work things out here. So the 147, we're climbing at 2,000, heading 060. Brickyard 5784, climb maintain 4,000, fly runaway, or fly heading at 040. 4,000, 040, Brickyard 5784. And of course, the RVR went up to 4,000 as soon as we canceled the approach. Hate to see it. Yeah, it's variable between the four, and now it's up to 45, and that's a rollout 4,000. Yeah. Brickyard 5784. There's a lot of precipitation. Like they're getting, they're getting schwacked with the, some serious rain and stuff. That's a significant offset though. Yeah. I mean, ILSs are, are like the closer you get, the more precise it becomes. So it's, it's. Four climb, maintain 4,000. Excited to climb. We're climbing. Break here, 5784. Okay. Southwest 147, we're at 2,000 feet heading 060. I'd like to uh, continue climbing. Yeah, just climb into 2000 and uh, give it contact approach 120.8. 20.8, so that's 147. And what were the reasons for the two go around? 
That's somebody else. That's not the right tag. I was tag. not in line with the runway at all. He was like east of the final. He was not going to land the runway. I mean, good on the tower, folks. Center Southwest yeah. 147, 2,000 yeah. feet, heading 060. Southwest 147, you're approach. Find and maintain 4,000. Say your intention. 4,000. And uh, I guess bring us around one more time and we'll uh, actually you can tell he's a little stand by. Okay, stand by. And approach Southwest 147, we'd like to go ahead and divert to Philadelphia. Uh, Philadelphia. Uh, p- yeah. To Pittsburgh, our alternate. Pittsburgh. Southwest 147, Roger. And they end up at Baltimore. Now via radar vectors. Clear to Pittsburgh via radar vectors. Climb maintain 5,000 Southwest 147. Southwest 147, turn left heading uh, 330. Left 330, Southwest 147. I would almost imagine she's the captain. I think she is the captain. Because it almost sounds like she's flying at, you know, the HUD, right? And because it was low visibility, you know, she's going to fly it. She's got the HUD. And when they go around, she's making the captain decisions of the diversion and she's looking at her paperwork and she's saying, Hey, you have the aircraft. I'm going to work the diversion because we got to call the company. We got to, you know, we got all these things we have to do to divert now because the weather is not uh, good enough. Um, dude, I, I don't know. It'll be think? interesting to see what, what comes out of it. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure we'll hear about it because whatever the issue you want to know, not so you can like bag on them because I've no mistakes no. so we can learn from it. Right. <clears throat> we'll learn from it. What happened? So I don't do that. That's, <laughs> that's the selfish pilot in me. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, like I said, I want to go back to, we're not criticizing and throwing anybody under the bus. It's an interesting thing. Cause it's a crew coordination thing. It could be something, I mean, there's all kind of failures that can happen. Now, granted they are, I mean, it's do it's backed up. It's not just one system. There's, there's multiple things that would have to fail. Um, for the system to be wrong, not to say that it never has, but dude, think about it as the passenger. I mean, you're going into LaGuardia. You've just done two go arounds. You heard the engine. They had to be toga. I mean, they had to be wide open. Oh yeah. You get a call like that. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, they were like, you know, hand foot throughout like everything is going as far forward as it can which pitches the nose because it's a 737 right it's going to pitch the nose up it's going to be a wild ride and that's why they're like hey you know yeah. and, and then there's already this media attention oh uh, yeah everybody and everything you hear is a 737 out there and they're like you know you could just hear you know f on the back well i shouldn't have flown southwest <laughs> airlines on this 737 you know i mean it's <laughs> and then you end up in baltimore yeah yeah, that's true. <laughs> and everyone, as soon as they land, everybody gets out the front. I was on a Boeing and we almost died. Yeah, almost, exactly, dude. It's I saw the tower fly by my window. It's crazy. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, there, there's probably a lot of turbulence. It's probably a bumpy ride. You know, if they're wind shear, there's got to be turbulence. So, oh, yeah, dude, hundred percent, man. I mean, <laughs> you don't have a smooth ride in the in the wind shear. Uh, and then the tower people, I mean, that's not something you see every day, but like I said, good on them for paying attention. They broke the air chain. For sure, there was a phone call made. Oh, yeah. There was a, there were, so the thing, here's the thing that concerns me, and maybe it's me just superstitious as a pilot. You know, I always say, but for the grace of God, go I, because any of this stuff can happen to any of us, right? This is not, like, we're not immune. Mm-hmm. Air chains happen, and that's why we talk about them, and that's why uh, this happens, but we're either super lucky or the training is is going super well because we've had so many error chains lately yeah. that I am just I'm like worried that you know the next one won't be broken and and I I just don't know if it's just because the media like we're just paying more attention now or if there actually is something going on where we we as an aviation community need to step back and go dude we need a safety stand down because we cannot keep having these near near mishaps yeah uh i you're you're right i my favorite saying is i i would always rather be lucky than good um i think it's a little bit of both man i think there's been some luck luck sprinkled in here and then i also think that the i'm not gonna say the training is excellent but i think it's adequate enough uh you know, and you know, it always seems like in aviation, right? You'll have periods of like 
no issues. And then all of a sudden it'll just be like a rash of issues. I mean, you can look back, you know, as long as we've been flying commercial airplanes, I don't know. I agree with you. Uh, you know, if the commercial aviation industry, at least in the U S was like one big squadron, yeah. they would have a safety stand down for sure. Like, all right, yeah. what's going on? Yeah. Yeah. Stuff's falling off of planes. We're cra almost crashing into towers. Like what in the hell's going on here? Um, yeah. it, I don't think it's outside the realm of possibility that there, that there is an underlying thing going on, but I don't know what it is. I have my own ideas, but I'm not going to speculate. Yeah. I, I just, I mean, I will just say that what we just saw is very unusual. Very. You know, and that's, that's why it's noteworthy is because it's, this is not something that you would see all the time. Now we weren't in the cockpit with them. We don't know what was <clears> going on. We don't have access to the CVR. We don't have access to flight data recorder, FOCA data, any of that stuff. Like there is a lot more information that I'm sure the company safety folks will find out, use and debrief. I mean, dude, you know, I, I've sat through, you know, I'm sure you have too. You did it in recurrent training where the company, you know, closes the doors, locks the doors, and they give you all the, the, they actually have the pilots in or at least on ours, they make a video and they have the pilots talk through the near miss that they had and how they avoided or what they could have done better or situations where in the news it worked out fine. But when you close the door, you're like, Hey dude, we got lucky. We got lucky and here's what we learned and how we get better next time. Yeah. That's one thing that really surprised me. And, and like you said, uh, watching this surprises me in the sense that, you know, when I was, uh, in a fighter flying instruments, instrument approaches, I could, you know, the, the tolerances were actually pretty sloppy. Yeah. Um, I could fly an arc as fast as I wanted to. If I was going to overshoot, I'd squat the jet, right? Yeah. <laughs> even in, even in IMC, if I was going to blow an altitude, I'd roll inverted and pull that kind of stuff. Right. <laughs> um, not, not, not what you want, but, um, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I remember one time, man, as a, a, you know, I was a, I was a nugget and you know, the whole night approach at the carrier, it's a giant instrument approach. You, you push off that altitude and you're supposed to push like within five seconds, I think from a very specific point. And I was late, dude, I had the burners kicked in. I was, <laughs> I was nearly Social supersonic dude, yeah. and I, and I'm supposed to be doing 250, Right. And I tip over and I'm just, you know, and how I didn't crash mm. in the water, like you said. God's grace. But when I became an, uh, got, you know, got 121 airline training, <laughs> those guys don't mess around. You yeah. get, you get like a nanometer past a half a dot and you're going around, you yeah. know? I, I mean, it's, it's, and when you think about it, it makes sense, right? I mean, you well, it's a lot bigger, of, yeah, big yeah, airplane, yeah. a lot of inertia. It's, not only that, but uh, it's kind of a PR disaster if you do happen to crash <laughs> one of these things. Uh, and you know, you got like, you know, men, women, and children, like you got families, grandmas, right? Dads, moms. Yeah. Um, so the, the tolerance for 121 operations, at least where I'm at is like zero. I mean, you get, uh, yeah. you get anywhere near being unstable, which my Navy days, well, I, I could save it, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I just transitioned to, a non precision <laughs> approach. Correct. Yes, <laughs> exactly, dude. Um, so it does surprise me because, um, you know, I've been just a hair off on uh, in simulator events and got told to go around, and I do, right? Yeah, I'm not all perfect, but, um, you know, in my mind, I was like, well, not bad, but whatever. You know, that's the tolerance with when you're dealing with uh, yeah. airliners. I think that no matter what happens, this will be used as a lesson learned. No, no, no. Like, even if the, even if the pilots did everything correct, which I'm, it, they could have, if, if it was a mechanical thing, you know, there's going to be something that will at the very least apply to that company, but more than likely can be used industry wide because maybe it's just a reminder. Maybe it's just a reminder right. like, Hey, we, we go around at, at, at this altitude for a reason. If you're not within the parameters, you have to go around. Don't try to, you know, the, the, what they, the look and see approach, you know, where you, you <laughs> pop out and you're like, uh, yeah, uh, you know, I, like there's no room for that. Mm -hmm. And I think safety departments around the country and the world in airlines need to be foot stomping. We cannot afford a mishap. Like 
No. The the fact that it's all in the news, I mean, that's hurting us a lot in general. But the moment someone loses their life, dude, it is going to be bad. It's 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 gonna it, it's we just we can't. We've gone too long without it. It's it's too delicate of a of, a, of this time right now, and yep. we need to. I mean, as much as we can avoid it. Obviously, some things are unavoidable, but you got to be on your game. And now this could be a a fatigue thing. You know, it could right. be a task saturation thing. Like there can be human factors that it's still not their fault. It's just, you know. Oh yeah, the Swiss Solid. cheese model. Swiss cheese, came, man, yep. came very close to lining up, and <laughs> thankfully, you know, the, the towers. Yeah, yeah, well, which has happened. I mean, remember San Francisco, Air Canada. Yep. Th- that dude was about to line up and land on a uh, taxiway. Taxiway full of airliners. That yeah, would have been what, worse than Tenerife. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I mean, we don't know, right? Like, what they yeah. were seeing, what they were. I mean, I, it's that so, one was different because that was the visual, though. I mean, yeah. you know, which this is a straight up ILS uh, in bad weather. Yeah. Even that, man, it's just, it's hard. You know how it is. Like, yeah. When you get in the airplane and you start moving at hundreds of knots and you throw yeah. in some weather and like, you know, second real, go around. Yeah. Real life stuff. Right. Um, it just gets like, it just, it, you know, it's not black and white, man. Dude, I could easily see third leg, second leg, oh, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. dealing with weather. You've already, yeah. you know, you probably took something happened. You were delayed before that's on your mind. You know, I mean, these human factors, things happen. Yeah. And it's our job to break the air chain. And luckily someone did. Yeah. That's, that's the lesson here. You know, someone did and let's figure out why this happened. Avoid it. Don't do it better. again. Yeah. yeah. Get better at it. All right, man. 